What's up legends? So a lot of you have picked up the brand new GoPro Hero 10 and you're wanting to know how you can shoot better GoPro photos. For many of you that have the older generations, a lot has changed with the shooting modes. Like what the hell is live burst? When would I use burst over single photo? What is time-lapse photo mode? In today's video, I want to run you through how you can harness the potential of your GoPro Hero 10 to take incredible GoPro photos on your upcoming vacation or holiday or if you're just at a beautiful beach like this in far north Queensland. All right, let's get stuck into today's video. When it comes to improving your GoPro photography, the very first thing you need to know how to do is to shoot and capture with intention. Now this simply comes down to understanding your camera and how you can harness the different shooting modes to get the shot that you want. Now when it comes to GoPro and specifically GoPro Hero 10 photography, you have roughly five different key shooting modes. That is single photo, burst, live burst, night photo, and time-lapse photo. Now, all of these modes can capture different things. And today I wanna to focus on two of them, and that is burst photo and time-lapse photo mode. The reason why I love to shoot burst and I love to capture burst photos is for the purely the nature of this camera, which is an action camera. It is a wide angle lens and capturing and slowing down motion or capturing time is what I believe this tool was designed to do. So let's shoot some bursts. That is how you take a POV. The POV. So one quick simple tip is to just shoot vertical as opposed to horizontal. Now this obviously comes down to my intention of posting the content on my social media feed. Now I have two options, right? I can shoot horizontal like this and I can crop into the image to make it look good on my gram. Or I can shoot vertical and not have to crop and have an awesome photo which looks more crispier and is using all of the image sensor in the GoPro. So you can just pick up one of these little sort of portrait mounts to set the camera up in a portrait mounting position like this and set up a tripod and away you go. So you're probably wondering when is the best time to use time-lapse photo mode versus burst photo mode? It's quite simply comes down to how long you have. Like if you're taking a burst photo, if you're performing a very fast action, you can only set the burst to go for 10 seconds. If you want to perform an action or if you want to be, you know, positioning yourself in the photo, setting it up on a tripod and positioning yourself in the photo, and that's going to take you longer than 10 seconds, like most people, that's when you would use time-lapse photo. Now there is one caveat here, and the big caveat is this, the output of the photo. You can either choose standard or raw. When you choose raw as your output, that will change all of the times, that time lengths that you have to use these features. But if you're capturing longer format time-lapse, um, the minimum raw image time interval is by half a second. You can't go faster. I hope that didn't convolute anything. <laughs> so in this example, I have the GoPro set up on a tripod and we are quite simply using the time-lapse photo mode firing at every half a second. It's a great way to put yourself in the frame and capture some amazing content without the need to use a remote. So the question beckons, when would you use JPEG and when would you use RAW? Or why would you choose RAW over JPEG? Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is why don't I just screenshot my videos. Why do I even use photo mode in the first place? And that is because when you screenshot a video, all you're able to capture is a JPEG. Raw photos contain much more detailed information in the file type, which gives you so much more variety and ability to edit that photo in post-production. So the reason why we choose uh, photo mode and the reason why we choose burst and the reason why we use the photo features of our GoPro Hero 10 is because we can capture raw images. It is amazing when it comes to edit. And so I should probably show you the difference. Let's jump into the computer and let's see the difference between a raw versus a JPEG. Jumping into Lightroom and checking out the GoPro raw versus the JPEG over on the right, you can see .gpr. 
that means this is the raw and now I've switched over or toggled over to the .jpg which is the JPEG. Zooming in to have a look at the more the amount of information that is in each of the photos I think this is honestly which separates the reason as to why I choose raw photos over JPEG. I've applied a preset the exact same preset to both images and you can see how much more information is held in the raw in terms of the lights the darks the definition in comparison to the JPEG. So this is the main reason why I choose to capture raw photos rather than just screenshots or JPEGs. The next way to improve your GoPro photography is to just head down there and smash that thumbs up button. But honestly, I would love it if you guys could because it will just share this video out with more legends. Thank you video on that. All right, moving on to shooting styles and perspectives. All right, jump on any sort of GoPro page, Insta360 page or action cameras in general, and you'll notice that there's perspectives that are being used over and over again to shoot photos. And we like to categorize them in four different categories. Number one is point and shoot. Simply enough, you're just you know framing your subject, framing up and taking a photo, kind of, kind of like you would naturally take a photo. Number two is POV, which is really fun, and that just simply means point of view. It could be your point of view where you're putting your camera, your chest high, it could be head mounted, it could be whatever sort of point of view of yourself you're having, but also you could have a point of view from a dog, for example, or from a tree. Number three is shooting with a tripod. Simply enough, mounting the camera on top of the tripod and setting off the camera. And the last mode is selfie. And so everyone knows about selfies. Obviously you're mounting this camera on this pole and framing yourself and maybe other people in the shot. So let's shoot some examples. Number one is just point and shoot. So do to change the exposure value of your GoPro is you can tap and hold on the middle of the um, screen. So if I tap and hold on the middle of the screen, it's going to bring up, I think it's like five seconds of tapping and holding, tap and hold for five seconds, it's going to bring up a spot meter. That will also bring up an exposure value. I can tap on the exposure value and if my photo is overexposed, I can just drag that slider down a bit. Very handy tip to getting the perfect GoPro point and shoot. So the first thing you want to think about when you're taking a selfie is which way you're going to angle the camera, right? We've talked about that vertical versus or vertical versus horizontal, right? The second thing that's going to influence the look of your photo is actually the length of your selfie stick. And that can have a drastic impact on the look of your photo. So we'll show you a photo taken with this selfie stick versus this one right here. maximizing your GoPro selfies is to try and reduce the amount of arm, physical arm you have in your photo. Now you can do this by not having the camera or the selfie stick, you know, jerks too far back. If you open up that selfie stick a little bit, that arm can, you know, almost, it creates this little semicircle and you can get a really nice selfie without having too much selfie stick or arm in the frame. Come up, let's do it, okay. Show us how it's done. Just like this. Okay. And... If you guys want to check out a couple more tips on how to maximize all of the tools, sliders, faders, and Lightroom Mobile, then I highly recommend you jump up here, click the card, and check out that entire video. You've got to be in an editing mood though. Check it out. It's super cool. Um, thank you for checking out today's video. If you have enjoyed it, punch that thumbs up button, and Anna and I will see you in the next video. That sounded like one like word, but it was Anna and I. <laughs> Peace.